What's up, my YouTube friends? There are so many options out there for you to live stream with. OBS Studio, Streamlabs OBS, XSplit, and of course, StreamYard. And today I'm gonna tell you why you should be live streaming with StreamYard, or depending upon your circumstances, why maybe you shouldn't. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you know when we have new content. Now, if you've never heard of StreamYard, it's a web-based live streaming software that makes it really easy to add guests, share your screen, and do all kinds of other really cool stuff. There's a link in the description if you wanna check it out. And every good software has its drawbacks. I'm also gonna cover why Depending upon what you want to do with your live streams, it might not be the right answer for you. So let's jump into the software and I'll show you how to set it up and how to use it. On the StreamYard website, you can either log in or get started. If you haven't created an account yet, you're going to want to get started and it's just going to ask you to verify your YouTube account and that sort of stuff. It's pretty simple. When you log in, you just put your email address in for the account you created and it's going to send you an email. You just have to verify the code, stick that in here. And once you do that, you log in and you come right to this screen here. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is click on destinations on the left and put in a YouTube channel or a Twitch channel or whatever you want to stream to. You do that by clicking add destination. You can see them all listed here. And if you've ever been through any process where your channel gets verified from TubeBuddy or anything like that, this is exactly the same. You're just going to be prompted for your credentials and you want to give StreamYard permission to access your channel. Once you have your channel set up, you can go and click create a broadcast. If you have more than one channel set up, you just want to select the one that you want to broadcast to and click on it. Then you can put in your broadcast title, your broadcast description. Privacy dictates who can actually see your stream. If you want it public so everyone can see it, you can check that. Unlisted means you can just give people the link and they can watch it. Private means no one can see it but you. Then you can schedule it for later by clicking this. I recommend doing it even if you don't want to schedule it for later so that you can add a thumbnail in here. I'm just going to put that in and show you what it looks like. And once you find your thumbnail, you just click apply. You're good to go. And then, of course, your scheduled time. Just put in the date and time that you want to go live and then click create a broadcast. It takes you back here and all you have to do in order to enter that broadcast is click enter broadcast studio. And like this says, if you're going to have guests on your stream, you should definitely be wearing a headset. You can't play your guest audio through your laptop speakers because it's going to feed back in through your microphone. So you gotta wear headphones if you wanna be able to hear them. And here you're going to set up your camera and you can see the highest resolution for a camera that you can set is 720. So that is one of the limitations for StreamYard. And you wanna set your microphone. And once you do that, you can kind of test to make sure everything is working right here. Put in your display name and click enter broadcast studio. Now to add you in the main screen, you just go down where it has your name, which is what you just set up, and you click that little icon and it adds you right to the stream. Down in the bottom, you can mute your audio. You can stop your camera if you wanna take a break and pick your nose or something. And right here, you can share out your screen. You click that button and you get this little warning. You go to share screen and there are three different ways you can do it. If you have a second monitor, you can share the entire screen of your second monitor. You can share an application window. So if you're running a game or maybe you want to do a Photoshop tutorial, you can share your application window or you can share a Chrome tab. And that would be, you know, anything from a YouTube tab to whatever you want. If you want to show someone a walkthrough of how to do something, using a Chrome tab is pretty cool. And the beautiful thing about using a Chrome tab, if you look down here in the bottom left hand corner, you can share the audio for that Chrome tab. So if you are playing a video or something like that through Chrome, you're going to be able to hear that audio on your stream as well. And that's pretty cool. So you can just select it. It automatically flips you over to the screen that you're selecting, just so you know. So you have to go back into StreamYard to be able to see your dashboard and take a look at what it looks like. Now, right below your display screen, you can use these buttons to change the layout. So if you want the extra screen to be big, you can have that. You can actually have the extra screen be full screen, which is really nice. You can change those layouts and even remove that second screen off if you want. It's really simple to do. 
to remove that screen share, all you have to do is click screen share and it just removes it for you. Now this is one of my absolute favorite features of StreamYard. This text feature is so cool. So right here is where your stream chat is going to be listed. And let me just post a little chat in here. And I could just click that comment and it shows up on my screen with my YouTube icon and my name. It's really cool. This is perfect for doing a Q&A stream. You can remove the comment just by clicking it again. And any comment is easy to do just by clicking on it. Really cool. Next, we're gonna check out banners. Here, you can add text to the lower thirds on your screen, and all you have to do is click on the banner. If you wanted to, you can go in here and edit one up and type out whatever you want on your own. You click save and you click it, and there you go, your text shows up. You can actually add this as a scrolling text. I go into edit here again, I click the scroll, and when I go to show it, you can see that text scrolls along the bottom. This is perfect for adding folks who may contribute to the stream or donate in some way through Patreon or something. You can just add their names as a scrolling bar along the bottom. I really like that. It's just so easy. If you go into brand, you can change some of the coloring and the backdrops and things like that for your stream. The themes is the default where your name will show up. I don't have my name displaying just yet, but that'll change that. If you click the overlay, you can see it puts this little overlay on top of here. Now, if you select background, let me show you what it does. I'm gonna add a Chrome tab real quick. And the background is this space behind the two things when you use a different layout. So you can set up that background to have different colors or different images. Although adding your own background is part of an upgrade package and it's not something that's included with the free StreamYard, but it is a really cool feature. Down here, all the way at the bottom, you can see you can show display names and you'll see my display name in the bottom left-hand corner. Now I can go up and I can change the brand color. I can make it whatever color I want behind my name. And that's pretty cool. This private chat button here is specifically important for adding guests to your live stream. So when you add a guest to your live stream, they're not actually in your stream until you click on their image to add them. But you can talk to them through the chat right here. So this is an area to talk to your guests before you put them on stream to give them some sort of instructions or anything like that or even just say hi. And no one else in your chat can see this. In settings, you can change your camera, and your audio, you can add a green screen here, which is a kind of nice feature. It works really well and it's super easy. And there are some different features that you can do for your guests. You can have it play a sound when your guests enter, or you can have it so your guests must authenticate. If you start to have problems with people finding the links to your stream and you want them to authenticate, you can just make them do that. And of course, guests see viewer comments. You probably want to add that just so that your guests can actually read the chat through StreamYard. And now we're going to get to the crowning feature of what makes StreamYard so powerful. It is really, really simple to have guests on your stream. Down in the bottom, you see this invite button. And if you click on that, you can copy this link to the clipboard. Now you can go and share that link with anyone that you want to appear on your stream. And when you go back in there, they just collect right down here at the bottom of the screen. And all you have to do to add them is just click on them and it adds them. And to change the layout of the screen, you just click on one of these layout buttons right below the main window. You can mute their microphones. And if you wanted to remove them from the stream, it's really simple to do as well. All you do is click on their image again down on the bottom. Adding a guest with StreamYards is just almost too easy. It's really fantastic. StreamYard is so simple to use. If you're new to live streaming and you just want to test the waters, see what it feels like to be in front of a live crowd, I highly recommend trying out StreamYards because there's nothing to worry about. It just works. You hop on, you can add guests, you can chat, you can talk to people, you can even share your screen and it's all really simple. StreamYard also works really well for people with older equipment because none of the processing is really done on your machine. Everything goes through the web to a central server. So as long as you have a video camera and a microphone, that's all you really need. It's pretty cool. Now some of the early drawbacks to StreamYard 
If you're just on a free account, you can only live stream for a certain number of hours a month. And the amount of options that you get are fairly limited. You can't change your fonts for your text and things like that. And that's kind of a bummer. But if you're just looking to wet your whistle with live streaming and you want something super simple and easy that's not going to tax your machine, you really can't go wrong. If you want to check out StreamYard, it's totally free and there's a link in the description. If you're looking to live stream more often or you want a more robust platform, StreamYard may not be for you. But just keep in mind you're going to need a better machine to run things like OBS Studio, Streamlabs OBS, or XSplit. If you want to see how StreamYard stacks up against OBS Studio, you should check this video out right here. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.